All right, basketball fans, welcome into a special live broadcast as we get an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with one of the star players in the LBA Serie A basketball out of Italy. Folks, please welcome in Naz Mitru Long. Naz, thank you so much for joining us here today. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me on, man. It's, uh, it's my pleasure, man. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the pleasure is all ours. Folks who have been tuning in to our live LBA broadcast on internationalball.tv may remember me. My name is Nico Cardarelli, exclusive English play-by-play -play voice of the LBA on internationalball.tv. And, well, the man joining us, he has been one of our key standout players at our last few broadcasts on International Ball TV. Naz has been phenomenal in the LBA this season. Let me give you a quick rundown of your stats. Naz, I'm sure you're aware, but for the fans at home, you're putting up a stat line of 16.8 points a game. That's good for fourth in league scoring. 4.8 total rebounds, 5.2 assists, 1.2 steals. That's all in averaging 29.4 minutes a game. So, Naz, I got to think you've been pretty happy with the way this season has gone so far with Brescia in Italy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I try to stay away from looking at my personal stats for a group amount of games. So, like, I'll look every five or six games because if I look too often, for some reason, I just get in my head a little bit about this or that. Um, so that's just something that I do. That's a little secret of mine. But um, most importantly, I'm just happy about where we stand um, in the league itself. We're currently in fifth place. And uh, after having an up and down start, man, we kind of didn't know if it was going to go left or right. But the team's clicking the way it is. And uh, we've won seven of our last eight if i'm not mistaken so mm -hmm. that's the, the the main thing that I'm, I'm i'm very happy about okay well i like that and i like you giving us some insight there about how you approach that because you know often we hear oh players say they don't check the stat line they don't read the papers they don't look at social but it, it's kind of refreshing that you say you do you just don't look at it too often but you know one of the things you hit there is, is a five game block and Right now, your team, Germani Brescia, over the last five games, you guys have won five in a row. You yourself have been on fire. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the dynamic of the team and the season so far, because, you know, you guys were four and seven at one point this season. You've now knocked off five wins in a row. Like you said, you're in the top five of the league standings. And you guys are just outside that that first, second place positioning behind Bologna and Milano. You guys are kind of right knocking on the door. So uh, what's the feel within the Brescia locker room right now as we get a look at some of your highlights from the LBA this season on screen? Um, you know, the feel is great. Um, everything is, is better when you're winning. And, um, you know, we have a young organization from top to bottom. Uh, everybody's pretty much under 40 years old. And, uh, you know, that just goes to show that youth can uh, can have some leadership as well. So it's all under the guidance of our coach, Ale, and um, he does a phenomenal job with our X's and O's. We have a great coaching staff, medical staff, uh, front office, and the whole nine yards. And um, us players, we're just complimentary pieces to what, you know, Mr. Ferrari kind of developed here in Brescia and what's a, a part of our plan, which is to continuously dream big. Um, you know, it's been going great, man. Like I said, you always want to be on the up, up and end uh, of the stick and to have a positive record like like we do in nine and seven. Um, you know, it, it's awesome, man. It's a real good feeling. And we just want to keep doing what we can for the Brescia fans and um, for, for our development as a program in general. You know, we're so lucky to be sitting down with you and chatting today. And there's so much I want to get to. We really appreciate you joining us. But I just want to stick with the team and, and this season a little bit longer. Um, the mix, as you mentioned on the team, there's a lot of youth, but there's a lot of international vibe as well. There's some key Americans on the team that you've really gelled with. Of course, you're coming to us, a, a Canadian basketballer with Greek and Trinidadian heritage. Uh, you know, you've got the standout Italian player in Amadeo Della Valle. What's that kind of been like having a, a locker room with guys from all over the world and you guys find a way to gel and, and, connect the way you have because you know in the games that we've broadcast on international ball.tv it seems like you guys are a really tight-knit cohesive unit on the floor and i gotta think that kind of translates off of the floor as well 
Yeah, um, you hit it on the head. Um, it's, it's a special, uh, special environment. It's a special opportunity for all of us because, um, you know, people say, "You're this is my brother, that's my brother, you know what I mean? But what people don't really understand is we spend most of the day together. And uh, when you have a group that's not cohesive on, on, on the outside of the court, it'll show on the court. And um, we have a tight knit group, man, from from the Italians to the international Americans to the Canadians like myself. Um, you know, everybody just commends one another. We compliment one another. We we all understand our roles and um, it translates to the court, man. And uh, again, I, I commend the leadership and that's where it starts from. It starts from the very top and uh, everybody is completely bought in. But I mean, you could look at these highlights right here. Every time somebody scores, the bench is up, um, high five in defensively, the whole nine yards, man, we're, we're very connected and um, we have great veterans. We have uh, great youth. And I mean, I could, I could go on forever, man. We just have a very great group and I'm blessed to be in this position for sure. Yeah, you guys are certainly the hottest team in the LBA right now, knocking off five consecutive wins. Now, it's like you said, seven wins in your last eight games. You guys have really turned it on at an important time of the season. And speaking of timing, there's a big in-season tournament coming up in the Frecci Rosa Final Eight. That's going to be a little bit later in February. Uh, I saw on your social last week, you guys qualified, you clinched your spot, and it seemed like the team was really amped around that. So uh, what what what's that mean to you to be playing in such an important tournament in the midst of the season? Um, it, it means everything. Um, you know, the the that's a very highly touted and regarded uh, mid-season tournament and uh that's 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 wide across europe you know the respect and um the animosity that goes into that the whole nine yards it's a big deal and um you know that was one of our main goals is was to get to the final eight cup and not only to get to it to do what we what we need to do to win and um i think that we're riding a very high horse not being cocky not being overconfident but just being understanding that we come from humble beginnings going on three to start and, uh, you know, it, it took a grind to get there. So we earned it. And uh, now we just want to go there and represent Jemani Brescia to the best of our abilities. And you guys certainly do that every time you hit the floor. It's been a real pleasure to be able to broadcast these games back home in Canada to Canadian basketball fans. So I, you know, I got to ask you, what does it mean to you to know that your games in the LBA are being broadcast live here on International Ball TV with English language commentary for your friends, for your family, but also for young Canadian basketball fans to be able to watch you, a Canadian, play professionally overseas? Um, it, mean, it means more than you know, man. Um, you know, one conversation that I had with my father, he was here for the first couple months with me when I moved out to Italy. And uh, he was saying, man, I, he never knew how many leagues and how much basketball goes on around the world. And, um, you know, it, it's not because he's ignorant or because of anything other than lack of education or understanding. Like, we just didn't know. I didn't even know how many leagues until I got into the sport and started to learn the business. Um, so to know that this is available for the, the next generation and, um, you know, for my family and friends and so forth, I mean, it's special, man, because there, there's hoopers. There's there's people who can play at the highest level out here. There's uh, players who are who young players can learn from. And I mean, I could go down the list in regards to the people who have played in the NBA that are over here now that will teach people a lot about the game. Um, it's special, man, because any any time you can get some knowledge in your craft and the thing you love, it's a benefit. So no, why not have it all across the world? And that's really the beauty of what's going on with us at internationalball.tv. Even our interview today, it's being broadcast on the LBA League website and across Asia, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, China, the Philippines. Of course, being an online platform, we bring the world to these stories like you. And it's so great to be able to highlight what you're doing overseas. You know, I got to think as a youngster playing your high school ball in Mississauga, Ontario, just down the road from where I am right now, uh, you know, if someone at that time told you you'd be playing pro ball overseas in your future, what would you have said to them? Um, uh, man, uh, I would I would have said something along the lines of like, I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. um, not because I just I, I knew I would be in Italy or overseas or anything like that. But I just knew that the game could take you anywhere that you wanted to go. And I knew this is what I wanted to do. And ever since the first time I got a ball put in my hand, I loved the sound of the dribble. I loved the sound of a swish. Um, but if somebody at that time told me that I was going to be playing in Italy, um, 
I'd have been like, dang, is the food really as good as they say? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is. So so I got to ask you, is the food as good as they say where you are? <laughs> hey, it, it's as good as they say. And then some, man, I'm telling you, like, I can't I, really I'm looking for a bad meal. Like I can't. You know what I'm saying? And and it's going to sound like I'm biased because I'm out here. But um, it's, it's, it's amazing, man. The quality of food is just high level doing some research and seeing what they don't allow in your food in Europe. I mean, I, I'm a big health guy, so that's huge. But I mean, it's going to be hard to go back to low quality food, man, because it's fresh <laughs> in Italy. Man, I hear you. My family, we're Italian. I still have family over there. Every time I go visit, you're right. Coming back home to Canada, we love Canada. It's one of the greatest countries on earth, but yes. no doubt about it. The cuisine, it's it doesn't even compare. I'll give you that. <laughs> Release me. Release me. Oh, all right. He's picked up a bit of Italian. I love it. You know what? On this note, uh, we're having some fun. I got to ask you, have you had any meals at an auto grill yet? Because personally, those are one of my favorite spots. It's a gas station cafeteria. It looks like junk from the road, but every time the food is fire. You know what? I have I have not. But now that you say it, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye open for it. You know what I mean? And if I see it, I'm stopping for sure because... It can't get bad. Like, I I know it's going to be good. One, you co-signed it. Two, it's Italy. So, you know what I mean? If I see a, if I see an auto grill, how you say it? Auto what? Auto grill. You got it. Grill? I'm, I'm going to stop there. I got you. Beautiful. All right. We are joined right now by Naz Mitru Long, Canadian professional basketball player playing overseas with Germani Brescia in the LBA in Italy. We get a look at some of Naz's highlights this season in the LBA, and you are tuned in on internationalball.tv. You know, Naz, one of the things you mentioned that I want to expand on is youth ballers in Canada. You know, I think growing up in Canadian culture, obviously sports are important. It's very much a hockey first mentality. But thanks to the Raptors, the Grizzlies back in the day, and and Canada basketball, there's been, uh, you know, way more attention paid to basketball than when you and I were growing up here in Mississauga. So if you had the chance right now to impart some advice or wisdom on young kids back home in Canada that have pro hoop aspirations, what advice would you give them? Um, my advice would just completely be, uh, you know, you have to believe in yourself before the majority do. Um, the opportunity is now there. And um, for me, uh, it broke open with, uh, you know, Tristan Thompson, Corey Joseph, those guys going to Texas and then really just blew the doors open when Anthony Bennett went number one and Wiggins followed up the year after. So the opportunities there with organizations that are in Canada with, uh, you know, the leagues that they have developed. So those kids have to understand that, one, you have to genuinely love the game. And two, the only way you're going to get everything you want is if you work hard. So believe before the majority, work hard and genuinely uh, develop a passion and love for the game. You know, and I think one of the things that whether it's Canada basketball or the basketball global community as a whole can do a better job of is like you alluded to educating young hoopers about opportunities outside of the NBA. Obviously you want to get to the NBA. That is the highest level. And, and that's every young hoopers dream, but it may not necessarily be in your cards, but that doesn't mean you can't have an incredible career in international basketball and you're kind of living that every day. So I got to think for you, that's pretty special. Yeah. 100% man. I, like I said at the beginning, I'm very blessed um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, I do understand what you're saying in regards to people dreaming for the highest uh, pinnacle of whatever they do. And that's exactly what they should do. Um, but with that being said, man, just because you go overseas, it doesn't mean that that can't circle back. Um, and it doesn't mean that you're going to have a bad experience wherever you're at. Um, one of the things that I've developed at, on my journey of becoming the person that I am now is, uh, you know, just be where my feet is, um, just to be as present as possible. And I only want what's meant for me because I'm going to get only what's meant for me. So um, that lack of education and understanding of the leagues across the world is something that needs to change because there's good money everywhere. There's good experiences everywhere. And these type of things, like the experiences that I've learned that I've had in this half a year so far, are things that are uh, priceless and measurable. Um, things that I'll cherish and it's just it's just contributed to the person that I am and I'm super thankful for it. That's phenomenal stuff. Uh, I want to run through a little bit of your collegiate career, your time in the NBA, and then kind of what 
the decisions were that brought you to Italy. So let's start with your time at the Iowa State Cyclones. You ended up playing five seasons there between 2012 and 2017. Uh, and I, I'll ask you what your personal highlight was, but I would think it was probably being in the NCAA March Madness and the big win over the Tar Heels. But, but hey, I'll let you answer for yourself. What was your NCAA highlight? Um, my favorite NCAA highlight, um, again, I played a game to win. So definitely beating the North Carolina Tar Heels to go to the Sweet 16. Uh, the game winner from DeAndre Kane was was definitely one of the pinnacles. Um, I wish I would have had my college roommate and, and uh, lifetime best friend, George Niang, there. He broke his foot the game before, so that sucked, but we still did it for him. But um, honestly, my favorite time in college or the, the the memory I'll never forget is when we won our first big 12 championship. Um, it was just, we. I just felt like we were on top of the world. Um, we finally did something that is going to be engraved in history forever. And then we went on to win two more, which was great. But that first one, it was special, man. It was, there was nothing like that. And, you know, as you talk about this, I'm curious, what was the process like for you as a high schooler playing ball in Canada to be recruited and to get the opportunity to go down to Iowa State and play in the NCAA? It was tough for me, man. Um, I was a late bloomer. Um, I played alongside a lot of great players, uh, you know, guys who were considered the best players in the world at the time. And I just happened to be a complimentary piece to them. And I never got my first offer until the very last tournament of my AAU career in Peach Jam. I took I think eight charges at that game. And that's what got me my scholarship offer to Iowa State. So I was one of those guys who like, it was life or death at a point. And um, so it was a rocky, rocky recruitment process for me. But once I got that, I decided to come back home and, and play my last year because it was like a big relief off my shoulder. And uh, I felt like at that point in my life, I reached the goal that I set and that was to be a division one college player. Very impressive stuff. Um, all right, I got to ask you one more high school related question because you played at Father Michael Gates. You also played at St. Martin. I'm going to make you pick a side here. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but <laughs> which do you consider your favorite high school of the two that you went to? <laughs> That's tough. And if y'all can't tell, we didn't call and go over the script before this. So I don't know. I, you know, that's you put me on the spot a little bit. <laughs> Listen, I got the utmost love for the St. Martin Mustangs, and I'm so happy at the year that we had there. We ended up losing one game. But for the simple fact that Ropsa disqualified us and didn't allow us to go into the Ropsa tournament and the Offsa tournament, I, I have to, you know, I can't turn my <laughs> – Gates is one block away from my house that I grew up in. All my best friends that I have now today are from Father Michael Gates, man. So I love St. Martin's with everything, but, I, I mean, I'm a – you know what I mean? I'm a gator, man. Hey, that's fair. I can respect that. As a kid who used to take Italian classes on Saturday at Father Michael Gates, that was a pretty neat school. It was a great yeah. school. And, uh, you know, it always had this reputation for being one of the top athletic schools in the region. So I can I can certainly appreciate that answer from you there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All mm -hmm. right. Now, um, so you spent a few year, five years, five seasons at the Iowa State Cyclones. And then after that, you're at this point where, you know, you're not drafted, but you have an opportunity to prove yourself to an NBA team. And you get the chance with uh, Indiana and Utah. So walk us through a little bit about what that was like for you, that process and going from the NCAA, not being drafted, but still having an opportunity with a couple of NBA teams. Yeah, um, it was a special process, one that um, I wouldn't trade for anything, obviously, because it made me into the player that I am now. Um, I've always had a, a, you know, quote unquote, Fred Van Fleet, bet on yourself type mentality. And, um, you know, that's the route I took. I just wanted to, to put the chips on my side. And, uh, you know, uh, the first year I went through half the year, it's just primarily G League. And I'm lucky enough to get that two way contract with the Utah Jazz. And, um, you know, for the time that I spent up there. The, the little gems and the, the key notes that I got from guys like Kyle Korver, Ricky Rubio, and then you want to even talk about some of the youth, a uh, star in Donovan Mitchell. Um, you know what I mean? Just watching the way Joe Ingles plays the, Joe Ingles plays the game, like it's just, it's just simple but to the point. You know what I mean? Like mm. the, the, the gems that I got 
from being called up and getting that two way are things that have installed confidence in me now because I know how to play the game because of the way I watched the game through those guys. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, it was a process, bet on yourself mentality, but um, I wouldn't trade it in or, or have it any other way, even with all the time that I spent in the G League. You know, that's such an interesting point. I think it really translates in when we watch you play in the LBA. You have this incredible hunger and tenacity in your game, but you also have this level of professionalism where it doesn't matter really how the game is going, whether you've missed five shots or whether you've just hit five consecutive shots. You're a true pro in the way you approach it, and it's like you just go out there and get the job done. You're focused on the task at hand, and, and regardless of the variables around you, you find a way to get it done. So I guess who do you attribute that, you know, mentality to? Was it a coach that helped you? Was it your parents? Who, who kind of gave you that mindset of, like you said, bet on yourself and go out there and prove yourself? Um, you know, if I had to, if I had to pinpoint one person, it would probably be my father. Um, you know, he, he's a guy who has a lot of character, but he doesn't show it too much um because he does it the right times and um that's who I am on the court you know like people who know me know me but when it's time for business like I'm I'm there for business you know what I mean I'm not going to get into the whole talking back and forth unless somebody brings the smoke then you got to bring the smoke you know what I mean but I'm just I'm I'm there for a job I'm there to do a job and and my job is to help my team win um so besides my father I mean the guy I idolized growing up in the basketball world is Kobe Bryant um you know two years it was his death last year and I'm not just saying that to say that that's, you know, it's the Mamba mentality. It's, it's, it's getting in there and black Mamba and things out. You know what I mean? So that's who I am. I'm just, I'm, I'm in there when I'm on the court to do a job, not to give into any other antics or do all them, them other things. Like I just want to, I want to win. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And you know, I saw yesterday you posted a little tribute to Kobe, some of his uh, highlights on your social. Uh, I want to expand on that in just a little bit, but before we key in on Kobe and what he meant to you, uh, I, I want to highlight your family a little bit more because you just talked about your dad. He's Trinidadian, your mother, Greek from Sparta. So you got that Sparta warrior mentality as well. Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit more about your family and the importance they had in your journey. Uh, my family is everything to me, man. Um, you know, I have tattoos about them all over my body. And, uh, you know, that's my core foundation. Everything I do um, is for them. You know, I'm, I'm getting a little, we're all getting a little older now. So I got some nieces some nephews, um, you know, and they mean everything to me, man. I had to leave uh, uh, home at a young age and that was the toughest time of my life. And and from that day, I remember driving away out the the, the parking lot and seeing everybody on the um, on the steps just watching me leave. And I'll never forget that day because that's the sole part of my motivation where we're a core group. Um, if I need anything, I know I can call any of them. And, uh, you know, I'm just I'm blessed and fortunate enough to have them in my corner. And that's what just keeps me going every day. So I could I could do things to, you know, help support them the way they're supporting me. Oh, fantastic stuff. And of course, no one gets far without their family. So that's fantastic to hear. You've got a good support system around you at home and i know at some point after the season you're going to be looking forward to getting home and spending some time with the family as well 100 percent. i need that, that home cooking for moms man I need, <laughs> I need to smell that canadian air you know what i mean i'm just home man for sure <laughs> awesome stuff all right so let's talk a little bit more about kobe bryant obviously two years yesterday uh him passing away in that tragic accident with his daughter and and all those youth basketball players the girls team there um you know you mentioned the mamba mentality did you ever get a chance to meet kobe have inter any interactions with him a and if not maybe tell us something about how his mamba mentality his work ethic uh, kind of motivated you? Um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate I never did get to meet Kobe. Um, I met a lot of NBA players, but and he, but I, it, it's not, and take it with a grain of salt, he was one that I wanted to meet. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a fan per se of anybody. Um, I'm a supporter. I support a lot of things, but um, he was somebody I was a fan of in regards to his mentality. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, something that I, I just... Little things like, you know, him being in that post-game interview saying, you know, job's not finished. You know, the job's not finished. Like, he's just – he is a killer man in every which way. Uh, some, based on the stories that I've heard, some may say it's it's to an extreme to where, like, he lives his life where it's like you can't really relate or, like, you know what I'm saying? Because he's so locked in. But I've I've I've, I've embodied that in my lifestyle. Um, 
I, I love eat, sleep, breathe basketball, you know, and um, I know he did just the way he studies and sees the game. And he was just continuously getting better, even at his old age to go out the way he did 50 points game winner. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't make that stuff up. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I could, the list can go on, man, from his reverse dunks to his fadeaway to his fit, his footwork is, his left hand was just as good as his right. That's why I pride myself on being a balanced player. I mean, mm-hmm. Kobe Bryant is the epitome of a professional in the way that you should drive yourself to be the best every day. And obviously Kobe spending some of his childhood in Italy while his dad played in the pro league in Italy. Uh, you know, I'm curious, was there any kind of tributes that you noticed around Italy, anything paying homage to him? Because I remember on the day of his passing, it was it was something that, sent shockwaves around the world and of course you know kobe spoke fluent italian he spoke beautifully and i I gotta think that even today there's a bit of a legacy with kobe bryant and basketball in italy um i didn't see any type of like memorial or anything like that Hmm. on the streets but i will say this though all the excuse me all the italian uh teammates i have and italian people i follow every single one damn near posted something on the story about Kobe. And um, I don't know if it's because of his uh, heritage and and him growing up in Italy, but um, I know that he paid a lot of respect to Italy for sure. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, damn near all my followers or the people I follow posted something about Kobe. So I know that he's loved across the world for sure. Yeah, legend, and he'll never be forgotten, that's for sure. Um, Okay, so Naz, I'm curious. We kind of talked about your journey from Mississauga to the NCAA to the NBA. You spent some time in the G League, and then after last season, an opportunity comes up for you to come overseas. So what kind of went into that decision for you to take your career to the LBA with Brescia? Um, I just felt like it was the time, you know, timing is everything in this life. And, um, you know, I just felt like it was genuinely the time myself and in my corner, my agents, my family and and so forth. And uh, ultimately, the biggest thing is I needed to go to a place that believed in me as much as I believed in myself. And that was Brescia. And um, they allowed me to they put the ball in my hands from the second I got here. They said I was going to be the point guard. And um, to this day, I even have I have a newspaper article in my kitchen right now after we went 0-3 of uh, a bunch of media outlets saying that, you know, um, they don't have a point guard and some things that I've heard for a long time in my life. And now that things have kind of shifted in our direction, the whole energy has changed with a lot of people, not only the newspaper uh, article writers, but a lot of people that have been in my life and kind of given me criticism for A, B, and C. Um, So from top to bottom, like I said, they've believed in me the way I believed in myself. And with that being said, I have room to grow and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning things, you know what I mean? But it was the time and it just felt like it was a, it was a perfect fit. Well, we uh, are, are enjoying watching you grow on and off the court. And we really appreciate your time here today, joining us on international ball.tv. Now, as before we let you go, we've been having some fun. I want to finish things off with a quick rapid fire with you. And then we'll say, you know, we'll sign off for all the fans here. Mm -hmm. So I want to start it off. I looked this up. Your NBA 2K rating is 68. Do you agree or disagree with that? I disagree. I disagree. All I disagree, right. but I can't argue it because at the end of the day, they go based off what you've done in the league, and I, I didn't do much. You know what I'm saying? But maybe one day it'll change, man. I, I think so. If you keep putting up the stats you are in the LBA, that's definitely going to change at some point. Uh, okay, what is your favorite pregame meal? Uh. <laughs> Lately, I mean, this whole year has been pasta. I mean, of course. You know I mean, pasta, good tomato sauce, season up the sauce and put some, some veggies in there. And that's it. All right. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite movie or TV show? Uh, my favorite movie uh, throughout my life was Sebastian Tell Fair Through the Fire. Um, okay. That was something I, I, I watched that young and I loved it. I just loved the breakthrough. I loved everything about it. Um, I mean, I have a couple favorite movies, but we'll just, we'll go with that one. Um, TV show. I've been big into TV shows since I've got over here. My favorite one I probably watched. I enjoyed Game of Thrones. Mm. I really like Queen of the South. I'm, I'm waiting for that fourth or fifth season to drop in April. Um, I, I'll go with those. I'll go okay. with those. Two. All right. I like those answers. Uh, who picks the music in the locker room pregame? 
Well, everybody has their own headphones, so uh, of course, <laughs> with their own. Like I got my own. Like I listen to a little bit of everything. So everybody okay, got- so so tell us, like, what's on your playlist? What is like one of the songs you have to listen to pregame that gets you oh, hyped up? Man, one of the songs. As of late, I mean, man, I listen to so much music. I gotta listen to um. Late, well, you know what? First and foremost, I'm gonna my Canadian artists, my young boys, you know what I mean? Netty, you know, from the five big, big time artists out there, Mississauga, check them out. G Doug, right. also from Mississauga. I definitely got them both in my playlist, rocking. Yes. Um, but I'm, I listen to everything, man. Drake, I mean, he's the GOAT. I, you're definitely gonna catch some weekend in my ear. Um, <laughs> Baby King, ESTG. I mean, I go down the list, man. I, I listen to everything. <laughs> So. I love it. I love it. Can Con being represented strong. I love it. Yeah. Uh, okay. If you weren't playing professional basketball, what would you be doing? Ooh. And, and I am who I am. Yeah. I'd probably be involved in the game in some way, shape or form. I'd probably be teaching youth. Um, okay. You know, a, 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 a father, Michael Gates, great. Um, one of the best trainers that's out there in Canada right now, David Tyndale. He has a great program running over there, and um, I'll probably be with him because inspiring the next generation is something we're all about. And I met all those guys through basketball, you know what I mean? And I love basketball for everything it's done for me. But just the game itself, it can teach you so many things. So I'll probably be teaching the game or involved in the game in some way, shape, or form, man, because this is all I know. I love it. A true basketball life for Nazmi True Long, point guard for Germani Brescia in the LBA Serie A basketball in Italy, joining us here live on internationalball.tv. And something you just mentioned there that I want to close things out on international basketball education. You mentioned it, inspiring the youth, the next generation. You're doing that every time you hit the court especially knowing that your games are being broadcast back home in Canada. So I'll ask you one last time, a message for the next generation of ballers. What would you say to those youngsters? Um, My message to everybody back home, um, Canadian, doesn't matter your heritage, given that we live in a melting pot. Um, Doesn't matter your shape, size, where you come from, boy, girl, um, just believe in yourself, believe in yourself, chase your dreams. Don't let anybody tell you, you can't do something. We all have two legs, two arms. Um, You know, we're blessed and fortunate enough. And even if you don't and you have some type of disability, whatever you genuinely love to do, go pursue those dreams um, because you have one life to live and nobody should sit here and tell nobody what they can can or cannot do. So um, go for it. That's all I would say. Dream big. I love it. A beautiful message, a strong message there. And Naz, we can't thank you enough for taking your time to join us here. We're actually going to be broadcasting your next game on Sunday against Venezia. So we wish you and your teammates with Brescia the best of luck. Personally, I'm pulling for you guys this season. I think you're going to make a deep run. I I even predict you guys are going to finish in the top three by the time it's all said and done. So Know that all of us Canadian basketball fans back home are cheering you on. And, Naz, I just want to thank you one more time for joining us here today. Hey, again, man, it's my pleasure, and I appreciate the great energy, man. We're going to we're gonna stay locked in and try and take this thing home one game at a time, man. I appreciate it, and shout-out to everybody back home for sure, especially Mississauga. Absolutely, and I'm going to have to get that Bargnani jersey replaced with one of yours because <laughs> yeah. I am now officially a Germani Brescia fan. So, yeah. <laughs> Naz, exactly. thank you so much, my man. All right, my guy. All right, folks, thank you for tuning in to this special live broadcast featuring a one-on-one exclusive interview with Naz Mitru Long, point guard for Germani Brescia. And remember, you can catch Naz's next game this Sunday at 2 p.m. on internationalball.tv. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.